Thank you, Sheila. I want to welcome dear friend Martin Luther King III to make some remarks. President Biden, President Obama, President Clinton, Speaker Pelosi. Especially to this tremendous family, the Kennedy family, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this memorial service honoring Ethel S. Kennedy. I want to extend my heartfelt sympathy and support to all of the Kennedy family who called Ethel Kennedy mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, aunt, sister, and friend. For we have all come together for this gathering to mourn the loss of a great American matriarch and to celebrate her remarkable life of love courage and her unflattering commitment to the cause of a more compassionate nation and world. I have long felt a special kinship with the Kennedy family. I worked at the United States Senate under the guidance of one of America's greatest senators, Edward M. Kennedy. And I've had rewarding friendships with so many of the Kennedy family members who are constantly making their respective contributions to our nation. I worked together with the Kennedy family members on many projects, so many that I can't count them all. For justice and humanity and unity in our nation, I experienced Mrs. Kennedy's wonderful hospitality at Hickory Hill on many occasions. Like my mother, Mrs. Kennedy hosted numerous fundraisers for social justice causes, and she was a strong supporter of racial justice. In particular, she was a builder of bridges, beautiful bridges of greater understanding, goodwill, and a hope for a better future. It's not an easy thing to host so many gatherings of social and political significance, very often on short notice, and to make sure everyone feels welcome and included, that takes a lot of dedication, sensitivity, and grace. No one did that better than Ethel Kennedy. There's a sense in which the Kennedys and Kings are bl a blended family. We understand much of what our respective families have experienced and been through. We also have a mutual understanding of the painful sacrifices we've been called to endure in both private and public life. It's a kind of shared journey through a transformational historical epic that brought new idealism and hope to our country. Despite the differences in our respective journeys, I believe that this bond between our families will endure through the decades to come. Fate and history knitted us together. Respect and love has kept us together. I will remember when Mrs. Kennedy came to our home with Senator Kennedy in 1968 after my father was assassinated. That's the first time I remember meeting Mrs. Kennedy. And just two months later, my mother went to the Kennedy home to express her condolences after the assassination of Senator Robert Kennedy. Like millions of Americans, I was deeply moved and profoundly impressed by the remarkable courage and dignity Mrs. Kennedy displayed in the difficult days after her beloved husband, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, was assassinated. But Ethel Kennedy was not only a spouse of one of America's greatest leaders, she was a force for social justice in her own right. She could have rested on her family's laurels and retired to a quieter life. 
but she chose instead to stay involved in the ongoing quest to realize the vision of a better world. That was at the heart of the Kennedy legacy. My mother, Coretta Scott King, co-chaired with Ethel Kennedy a national gun control education and advocacy campaign called A Time to Remember. As two women widowed by gun violence and political assassination, they felt that they must help lead a movement to help spare others the devastating loss of beloved family members to gun violence. And they didn't just endorse this important cause. They worked hard for it. And they showed up time and time again to lobby Congress to take action against gun violence and to give people hope and inspiration to overcome tragedy. As the son of a strong mother of four energetic children, I have marveled at the multitasking skills of single mothers on numerous occasions. And when I think of all that is involved in being a single mom of 11, children like Ethel Kennedy, I am awestruck by her amazing stamina, her dedication to her family, along with all of the great causes she supported. In fact, I remember much later, in 1995, President Clinton, when Ms. you and Mrs. Kennedy invited me to Indianapolis. Uh, you may remember that after my father was killed in 1968, that Indianapolis, there were over 100 cities burning on April 4th. Indianapolis did not go up in flames because Robert F. Kennedy made such a profound appeal to that city. And I remember as that park in Indianapolis was dedicated, President Clinton, you and Mrs. Kennedy invited me to attend. Just as it was not random luck that Martin Luther King Jr. found a wife who was strong enough to endure the daunting challenges of the Civil Rights Movement. It was no accident that Bobby Kennedy found a wife and partner who could handle the unrelenting slings and arrows that surrounded his leadership. Our God understands that greater leadership requires great companionship. And one thing I learned from my mother is that beside every great leader stands a stalwart and very strong partner who refuses to be intimidated or distracted by the many side dramas that come with notoriety. And so I am so honored to join in this celebration of Ethel Kennedy's luminous life of faith, love, and service. Today I join with millions in saying how grateful we are, we all are, that Ethel Kennedy answered the call and rose to the challenges of God's plan for her life. We will long remember her vibrant legacy with love, respect, and ongoing commitment. Thank you, and God bless you all.